Hi, I'm Joshua Henderson, and before I continue, please like and subscribe to hear more about how my perfect little family fell apart. I own Henderson's Auto Repair in Boston, been running it for 15 years now. It's not glamorous, but it puts food on the table and keeps a roof over our heads. Dad, can you believe I got the lead in the school play? Madison burst through the shop door, her phone in hand as always. That's amazing, sweetheart! Pizza celebration tonight? That was my Madison. Talented, bright, and the spitting image of her mother. Lost Sarah to cancer eight years ago, but I see her every day in our daughter's smile. We might not live in the fancy part of town, but we've made our three-bedroom house a home. Mr. Henderson, the Mercedes is making that noise again. That's how I met Richard Blackwood. Custom-tailored suit probably worth more than my monthly income driving a car that cost more than my house. His wife, Victoria, stood there, designer sunglasses perched on her nose, eyeing my shop like it might contaminate her. Madison, darling, is that you in the background of these Instagram posts? You have quite the presence on camera. That's when things started changing. Victoria took an interest in Madison's social media accounts, always commenting about her natural talent and star quality. Their son, Cameron, started showing up at Madison's drama rehearsals. Dad, the Blackwoods invited me to their summer house this weekend. Cameron says they have their own theater room. You know we have movie night on Saturdays, kiddo. That's so basic, though. Can't we skip it just once? Basic. That word hit harder than I expected. Started noticing other changes, too. The way she'd hide her phone when I walked by. How she stopped wearing the handmade jewelry her mom left her. The embarrassed look when I picked her up from school in my work truck. Mr. Henderson, we'd love to have Madison over more often. Our Cameron is applying to Juilliard next year. We have so many industry connections that could help with her acting career. Victoria's offers kept coming, and Madison's eyes got bigger with each one. My daughter, who used to help me change oil on Sundays, and now spent hours at their mansion, coming home with stories about their indoor pool and private chef. Dad, you should see their garage. Mr. Blackwood has, like, seven cars. Well, we've got seven cars, too. They're just waiting to be fixed, I joked, but she didn't laugh like she used to. One night, while closing up shop, I overheard Madison on the phone. I know, it's so embarrassing. My dad's just a mechanic. I wish, I wish I could have what you guys have. That's when I knew something was wrong. Really wrong. My little girl, the one who used to proudly wear my shop's t-shirt to school, was slipping away, and I had no idea how to stop it. Dad, you've got to see this video Madison posted. Isn't she in your house? My buddy Mike from the parts shop texted me a link. Something felt off. Madison's main Instagram account hadn't been updated in weeks, but this, this was different. A secret account with thousands of followers. I never thought I'd find a real family again. Madison's voice cracked in the video, tears streaming down her face. After losing both my parents, the Blackwoods showed me what love really means. My coffee mug shattered on the floor. Both parents? I rewound the video, heart pounding. Living in foster homes, never having a real Christmas. She was sitting in the Blackwoods living room, Victoria's arm around her shoulders, but now I finally have a mother who understands me. Comments flooded in. So inspiring. The Blackwoods are angels from orphan to princess. Madison Grace Henderson, get down here right now. She descended the stairs, phone in hand. What's your problem? My problem? You're telling the whole internet I'm dead. That you're some orphan the Blackwoods rescued? You don't understand. Victoria says authenticity doesn't get views. Nobody wants to follow some mechanic's daughter authenticity? You're lying about your own father. Well, maybe I wish you were dead. At least then I wouldn't have to explain why my dad smells like motor oil all the time. The words hit like a physical blow. Madison. The Blackwoods get me. They know I'm meant for bigger things. Victoria's already talking to agents about my acting career. They're using you for their own publicity. Using me. They're helping me. Unlike you, stuck in this pathetic little life... Fixing other people's luxury cars because you can't afford one yourself. The doorbell rang. 
Victoria Blackwood stood there, all perfect makeup and practiced concern. Joshua, Madison called us. She's very upset. You've been coaching my daughter to lie about her life. We're simply helping her craft a more marketable narrative. The orphan angle tested very well with focus groups. Focus groups. She's 16, a crucial age for building her brand. We've prepared papers for temporary guardianship. Guardianship? You can't be serious. Our lawyers are very serious. Madison clearly needs a more suitable environment for her talents. Madison appeared with a packed suitcase. I'm going with them, Dad. Don't try to stop me. If you walk out that door... You'll what? Ground me from the life I deserve? I'm done being the charity case mechanic's daughter. Victoria smiled that perfectly practiced smile. We'll have our lawyers contact you about the custody arrangements. They left me standing in the doorway, watching my daughter climb into their Mercedes without a backward glance. The same Mercedes I'd fixed countless times, never knowing it would be the vehicle taking my daughter away. My phone buzzed. Another notification from Madison's secret account finally living my truth with my real family. Some people just don't understand that stars can't shine in a garage, and their pattern goes back at least five years, three other teenagers, all with similar stories. Sarah Chen spread photos across my kitchen table. Meet Jamie Torres, Lily Chen, No Relation, and Marcus Webb. What happened to them? Jamie had a mental breakdown after Victoria pushed her into modeling. Lily got hooked on pills trying to maintain their impossible standards. Marcus, he tried to expose them, but mysteriously lost his college scholarship. I studied Madison's latest Instagram post, a staged photo at a charity gala. Her smile didn't reach her eyes anymore. Look at this media contract they made her sign. Sarah pointed to fine print. They own her image, her story, even her future earnings. My phone buzzed with a notification. Madison was live streaming from a luxury car dealership. And here's the amazing Richard Blackwood donating another car to charity. He's taught me so much about giving back. I watched Richard's practice smile, remembering what Sarah uncovered about his charitable donations. All tax write-offs, all manipulated numbers. Dad, a text from Madison, rare these days. Can we talk? Always, kiddo. Cameron, he got mad today, said I was flirting with his friend. He grabbed my phone and... He did what? Never mind, Victoria says I'm being too sensitive. Forget I said anything. Sarah's investigation kept digging deeper. Their last quarter's financials don't add up. Victoria's been moving money through shell companies, and Richard's stock trades, always suspiciously perfect timing. Madison's posts became more frequent, more desperate. Product endorsements, charity appearances, staged family moments, comments carefully monitored, negative ones instantly deleted. Look at these texts! Sarah showed me screenshots, Cameron controlling what she wears, who she talks to, classic abuse tactics. A new video, Madison promoting the Blackwoods' latest venture, a teen modeling agency. Her hands shook holding the microphone. They're making her lie about her age and contracts, Sarah noted. She's signed dozens as an 18-year-old. Then came the photo that broke my heart. Madison at a red carpet event, Victoria gripping her arm tight enough to leave marks both smiling perfectly for cameras. Dad, another late night text. The things they're making me say, I don't. Message deleted before I could respond. We've got enough, Sarah declared. Tax fraud, labor violations, insider trading. And this morning, I found proof they bribed college officials for Cameron's acceptance. I watched another live stream. Madison announcing the Blackwoods' new youth foundation. Everything they touch is fake, Sarah concluded. Their charity, money laundering, their social causes, tax shelters, their love for Madison, just another publicity stunt. My daughter's latest post showed her in their mansion, surrounded by luxury, looking smaller than ever. Caption, living my best life, hash, blessed. But I saw the truth in her eyes, the same look I'd seen in the photos of Jamie, Lily, and Marcus. The look of someone realizing too late that everything that glitters isn't gold. We're ready, Sarah confirmed. One phone call to the FBI and their whole house of cards collapses. I stared at Madison's photo at my little girl, trapped in a golden cage. Make the call. 
Breaking news, power couple Richard and Victoria Blackwood arrested on multiple federal charges, including tax evasion, securities fraud. The news exploded across every screen in Boston. FBI agents swarmed the Blackwood mansion, leading them out in handcuffs. Victoria's perfect makeup couldn't hide her rage. Richard's tailored suit looked a lot less impressive with restraints. You promised me Juilliard. You said we were family, Madison screamed at Cameron through the gates. Family, please, you were just another one of Mom's charity cases. Don't call me again. Her social media empire crumbled overnight. Comments flooded in. Fake orphan exposed. What a fraud. Can't believe we fell for this scam. Her real dad's alive? She's disgusting. Then came the knock at my shop door. Madison stood there, mascara streaked, designer clothes wrinkled. Daddy. I'm sorry. I was stupid. Can I come home? No. What? The apartment's paid for. First month's rent and security deposit. The rest is up to you. But I'm your daughter. My daughter died the day she wished I was dead. The person standing here? I, I don't know her. Please, everyone hates me. My accounts are frozen. Cameron won't even look at me. Sounds like perfectly natural consequences to me. Sarah brought more updates. Richard facing 20 years. Victoria's secret accounts exposed. Cameron's college acceptance revoked. Their empire, built on lies and exploitation, demolished. Madison tried everything. Tearful voicemails, social media apologies, even showing up at the shop. But I'd learned something from all this. Sometimes love means walking away. The new location's doing great, Mike told me as we expanded Henderson's auto to a second shop. Who knew your story would bring in so much business? I saw Madison sometimes working as a waitress across town. Her viral fame became viral shame. No more designer clothes or red carpets. Just regular life, the kind she'd been so desperate to escape. The Blackwoods? Last I heard, Richard's serving time, Victoria's facing more charges, and Cameron's working at a car wash. Ironically, the kind of job Madison used to think was beneath her. Dad. Her last message sat in my voicemail. I know you'll never forgive me. I don't deserve it, but I want you to know you were always enough. I was the one who wasn't. My new life is quieter, peaceful. The shop's thriving. I mentor young mechanics now, teach them there's dignity and honest work. Sometimes I see Madison's old posts pop up in social media fail compilations. She wanted fame. She got it, just not the kind she wanted. What would you do if your own child publicly wished you were dead just to gain fame and fortune? Would you forgive them after they lost everything? Or, like Joshua, would you choose peace and distance over reconciliation? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If this story of betrayal and consequences touched you, don't forget to like and subscribe for more real-life stories that expose toxic relationships and show how karma eventually catches up. Remember, sometimes the hardest form of love is walking away from someone who chose to walk away from you first.